Isabel, this year's MPA annual conference is looking at sustainability and the circular economy. Why is it so important that we're discussing this subject now? I think uh, sustainability has now become really mainstream business. I mean, it's in everybody's lips all the way to board level. And it's probably come because of the few market changes, especially that we've seen happening in the last two to three years. Um, I think just to mention the top one, so from a government perspective in the UK, obviously declared net zero carbon target, which is amazing. I think following the latest uh, IPVC report that came out in November last year saying we've got 12 years to save the planet and for points of no return you now have over 150 councils that declared climate emergencies uh, you've got the government working on the environmental bill um, but not just from you know government and policies you also have a massive shift in consumer attitudes not just the mindsets which is amazing so you know with the blue planet to effect um, Greta Extension Rebellion, you've got people who now really shift the way they buy products and services and expect organizations to really do much more towards sustainability, uh, which is fantastic. Um, disruptive technologies, so you finally have disruptive technologies that are becoming affordable in renewable energy, battery storage, um, uh, AI, robotics, blockchain, uh, that fundamentally shift uh, sustainability and deliver breakthrough impact, which is great. Um, but you also have, I think, what's probably, from my perspective, the most uh, hopeful and energizing is you finally have, you know, in financial institutions and big banks which are supporting um, sustainability in the circular economy. So uh, banks like, you know, EIB, the European Investment Bank, that announced uh, last July uh, that in partnership with five other European banks, they're going to put in place a 10 billion fund for the next five years to support circular projects. Um, in Tessa San Paolo alone, they've got five billion for that as well. But all the others, like BNP Paribas, ING, you know, you name it, uh, and not just financial um, banks like this, but also investment companies. You've got now the biggest investment companies in the world actually saying, if you're an organisation, and unless you have sustainability at the heart of your board decision-making activity, they won't invest in you. And they don't do that out of their good hearts. They do that because they really see sustainability as the next biggest growth and reason why to invest in a company. If you are proactively embracing sustainability today in the way you run your business, you will become more profitable, you will have higher staff retention, and you will become more innovative. And that's really energizing, uh, I believe. So there's some really serious numbers you're talking about there and some yeah. really serious drivers. Um, certainly from my perspective, I dealt with the sustainability agenda for 20, 30 years, but the circular economy seems a little, it seems a little newer. Mm. Could, you, could you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, of course. So circular economy isn't new in a way. Uh, if, you, if you talk to some of the founders of the circular economy, they would argue that circular economy in our society has been ingrained since the beginning, um, but uh, more in a way of an economy of necessity mm -hmm. instead of the economy of prosperity that we're in today. I think the best way to look into circular economy is to look at um, the, the way we live today, and we live in a linear economy. So we, we take things, we make things, we dispose of things. And in a society that is driven by massive growth in population, that is driven in a way where we think success is linked to our kind of buying power, uh, where we keep buying more and more things and we keep disposing of more and more things, it just creates massive amount of waste. Um, and it got to the point where now a lot of organizations, a lot of individuals are realizing we actually can't continue this way. And we, did, we need to fundamentally shift uh, the way we do business and the way we run our society. And the circular economy is the answer to this. It literally tells all the way from governments to organizations to individuals how to be able to grow in a world of finite resources. Uh, how can you continue to make profit while also preserving society and the environment? And if you talk to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which is one of the leading body for circular economy, you know, they will tell you uh, the principles uh, that they believe should, should any, anybody look into when they want to become circular. And there's three fundamental ones. One is, you know, design waste and pollution, design out waste and pollution. Keep your services and products in use for as long as possible and regenerate natural system. And if you do this, I mean, the MF forecasts the circular economy in Europe alone to be a business opportunity of 1.8 trillion. So it, it's absolutely massive. Um, and it's a global movement now, which yeah. is which is really great. So a 1.8 trillion opportunity. Yes. Um, you explain the philosophy. It seems quite challenging. 
Can you yes. give us some examples of how some firms have grasped this? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I would say one of the pioneer companies leading on circular thinking is probably Philips. Um, and one of the ways they started on that journey as well with um, Schiphol Airport. So instead of going and making a normal contract, they, they created a contract with Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, which is a, a contract of service of light. Mm -hmm. So and if you're the Schiphol Airport, you don't need to worry at all about any of the lightning equipment that you, that you need to make sure that your airport is run successfully. All that is run by Philips. So Philips maintains the ownership of all the lightning equipment for the airport and they're responsible for the maintenance, they're responsible for the repair and they're responsible for ensuring that literally uh, Schiphol Airport's got the light it needs to run. Um, so that's really interesting for Schiphol Airports because that means zero maintenance costs and that means less hassle as well. And for Philips that's great because that's a long-term relationship now that they've got with a client and because they still own their assets, they're still much more incentivized to ensure that the asset's much more robust then centralized to ensure they can repair them easily, they can bring them back to their factory to reuse, uh, so it's, it's generating profit for them as well, so it's, it's really interesting. Um, other examples could be Renault, so mm -hmm. they've, they are also a pioneer thing in circular thinking. They made one of the factories in France 100% circular by closing the loops in their resources and metals, for example, and the way they repair um, their assets. Um, and thanks to that thinking, um, this site, factory site in France is now their most profitable site across Europe, uh, which is great. Um, Walmart, another one, they've actually changed the brief to their whole supply chain and they've said lately that they want all their supplies to reduce plas uh, plastic packaging and the pack packaging um, in general by 5%, which generated millions of savings for Walmart um, in, in cost, uh, waste cost disposal, which is, which is great. Um, but it's not just big corporation or even governments, um, it's also startups. So thanks to the financial supports, you now see a huge amount of startups booming in the circular economy space and I've met so many of them, it's so energizing. Uh, literally embracing circular business models and fundamentally changing the way uh, the market runs. Um, one could be um, Skipping Rocks Labs, um, so their owner is French, he, he's very inspiring and his view was he wanted to find a solution to get rid of a single-use plastic for the world. And he came up with this kind of an innovative idea of uh, a replacement to plastic which is made of seaweed. It's transparent and it's so environmental friendly that you can eat it. So in there, imagine you can put water, green tea, but potentially in the future you could put ketchup or shampoo, right? Um, and, and it's booming. And they've just supplied the whole London Marathon with their products uh, just a few months ago. So these are just a few examples uh, oh, you, of circular economy, yeah. That sounds fantastic. So you're obviously a hugely passionate advocate of this agenda. Um, you want to change the world by the sounds of it. Absolutely. The conference is one step on the way. What, what do you hope comes out of the conference? So, so, I, so you know, my background is also, uh, I'm a chartered project professional and I really want to combine my two worlds of sustainability and circular economy, which fundamentally I believe is the future and the right to go, with also the way we run major projects. Mm -hmm. I believe the sustainability world now needs to stop debating and start acting. And this is where we come in, and this is what our most skill set is about. Okay. Um, so I've got huge hopes for major projects and the world of projects in general. And I fundamentally believe we need to start doing things differently. Um, I want sustainable and circular projects to become the norm, not the exception. Um, and I want that for every part of the journey and the way we deliver on major projects from their inception and the business case creation, um, we have circular and sustainable principles to be embedded all the way to the decommissioning part and how do we ensure that we recover end of life as much value as we can to generate more profit and revenue. Um, and I fundamentally believe that if every project manager in this world was to embed circular and sustainable thinking in the way they deliver their projects, what an impact we could create to the world. So uh, yes, that's my uh, hope for the future and this conference is going to bring a tremendous amount of great speakers from sustainable and circular um, experiences sharing with the audience their journey on how they embedded sustainability and circular thinking into their major projects and their lessons learned and success stories um, and it's going to be very inspiring so hopefully uh, 
uh, this kind of amazing collaborative association is going to come together, roll up our sleeves and come up with uh, concrete actions on how we can act differently tomorrow. Fantastic. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it. You've inspired me. Thank you. I, thanks a lot, Isabel. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers. Thank you.